to do. All right. So, um, welcome everyone. It's uh, good to have you all. Um, Mr. Jimmy, I, I just mute your mic just in case. Okay. All right. So these are the topics that we will be covering uh, for this session. And before I start, I just want to thank you all for uh, joining uh, the section today. Unlike the previous session, uh, this is going to be also light. It's not going to be uh, intensive on, on the brain. So it's going to be light. I designed the entire training this way so you don't get to see the heavy lifting uh, before we actually get to, get to it because people often get discouraged before getting to the heavy part of programming, uh, which is not good because I believe everyone can become a programmer but oftentimes we get discouraged before we get to that point because we didn't have the uh, proper orientation. So this is why I designed this this way. Okay, so let's start immediately. Uh, introduction to web programming. Uh, in the last session, we talked a little bit about uh, the language of the web, okay? Which is uh, CSS, JavaScript, and HTML. This is, these are the three languages of the web. I'll write them again, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Java is not JavaScript, okay? Java is not JavaScript. I can give you the story, a little bit of the story, why? So when, when JavaScript came out, I think it was in 1995, the, it was called different names. It was called LiveScript. It was called, it was called several names. So at some point, at that point, Java was very popular. It was so, so popular. And Java basically means coffee. So if you look at Java, it basically means coffee. Uh, so at that time, Java was very popular. So they decided, okay, fine. They're going to call it JavaScript so they can leverage on the marketing that Java already had, and then they call it JavaScript. <laughs> and they have got, they've been stuck with that name for, uh, for a while. Uh, although, <laughs> although professionals in the industry don't exactly call it JavaScript, they call it ECMAScript. Uh, so depending on which one you want to use, you may, it's a lot to take in, in most times. So, uh, ECMAScript, ECMAScript is JavaScript, okay? So that's all I'm trying to say. ECMAScript is JavaScript. So when you see ECMAScript, ECMAScript is a scripting language specification standardized by ECMA International. It was created to standardize JavaScript to help uh, foster multiple independent implementation. So it's the same thing. ECMAScript or EX. Six ex six ex five, the six five just indicates the year. Ex six indicates twenty fifteen. Es five indicates I think two thousand no two thousand and fifteen. Wait, two thousand and five. Yeah. Well, I have to check. I can't even remember. So, if you look here, it says it is ex. It is ECMA or ex. So depending on which one, I am giving all of this because. It is essential to know because when you start to learn one language, you meet someone who's going to say, why are you learning JavaScript? Why don't you learn Java? Wait, why are you learning HTML? <laughs> why don't you learn PHP? Uh, my friends, that's a confusion. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Okay. It's very important to know what you want and go for what you want, okay? Why are you learning HTML? Why don't you learn CSS, okay? In the last session, we talked about environment. If you understand that HTML 
what HTML is going to do, CSS cannot do it. Then you know that, look, you can say to the gentleman, please slow down. When I finish learning HTML, I will learn CSS. And when I'm done with CSS, I will learn JavaScript. All right, this is like the, the trajectory that often front-end developers take, okay? So the, there are three languages of the web, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So any, any site you check in your browser will have these three. So if I go to inspect, every browser has inspect. Uh, before I do that, let me change this to white so that you will all see what I'm doing. Great. So if I go to source sources, you will see that I have the three. Uh, this is JavaScript, by the way. This is JavaScript. So I am in this website, Google. Uh, maybe Google is not the best. Let me use, a, yeah, because Google has so much information and I, I just searched for something. Okay, so this is a simple site. Okay, simple site. What do you see here? Here, doc type HTML, doc type HTML. So that is HTML for this site, all right? Now, what do you see here? Styles, styles, okay? That's CSS, okay? And when you come to the sources, Then you see JavaScript, JS. Every website on the internet has three languages, all of them. This is the Google site that we were previously. If I come here, I see HTML. If I drag this one, I see CSS. And on the sources where we were previously, this is JavaScript. So what does it mean? What does this mean? What it means is that for a website to function, you need three languages. For a website to function, for you to actually have a website, you just need three languages. With these three languages, you can have a website. All right, that's what it basically means. All right. Now the question, why three languages? You need HTML, for the structure, it's just like, just like myself. If you remove my skeleton, my entire body would just shrink to the floor, like you know, like a mashed mellow. <laughs> so that's the skeleton makes me stand. It's the skeleton that determines your height. So HTML is the skeleton. All right. My skin and the way I look, I look different from Mr. Jimmy or from Mr. Andrew or from Ms. Tola or from Ms. Jennifer. We look different. That's because of our style. So that's what CSS does. Google looks different from Microsoft website. Why? That's because of the style. Okay, so the question then is, so what the hell is JavaScript? Why do we need JavaScript? Well. If you go to a website and you see something, I give you, I give you a good example, a very good example. Uh, say, uh, say uh, the site. So you will see JavaScript in action. Uh, showcase, at some point we'll be using Webflow because we won't be doing any heavy coding. Uh, so just in case you are scared, <laughs> please don't be scared. We won't be doing any, any heavy coding. So do, do you guys notice what is happening on the site right now? You see that, right? You see, if I scroll, okay, I think this, the, the JS already is done. Okay, you see that? You see that? You see? So that is basically JavaScript in action. All right? I'll show you another example. 
just so you can you can see uh, JavaScript in action. So uh, what I'm trying to say to you in that regard is that now look at this. You see that? You see the animation without even clicking anything. Something happens as soon as I get to the site. Look at it. When I move my mouse, it responds. So that is JavaScript in action. You see, when I'm scrolling out, when, I, when I'm scrolling out of view, it uh, spreads these things. And when I'm scrolling into view, it brings this mobile phone and this together. You see that? So that is JavaScript in action. All right? What does that mean? Uh, JavaScript brings dynamism to the site. So when you have a structure, a skeleton, all right, and you have a style, style can be very static, although CSS has advanced a lot. Uh, so we, basically we have dynamic styles like on hover, blah, 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 stuff like that. But when you want to make your site look unique with different animations or stuff like that, on click, send something and click go get something those are those are logical statements so that's where javascript kicks in so javascript helps with dynamic uh, functionalities or maybe not so much of dynamic functionalities but just functionalities okay so we have three languages of the web guys don't forget that html css and javascript all right So why, did we, why are we choosing this approach? Why design different de development, all right? I will experiment why, so that you can see. Uh, maybe not more of experiments, because experiments is gonna take a long time to set up. If you want to build a website, all right? and you go to Visual Studio Code to build a website, okay? Oh, what, which one did I drag? Visual Studio, I didn't say. So this is Visual Studio Code. That's the software you downloaded. I will also make it white so that you can see. Uh, I don't know where the button is. I just know the shortcuts. Uh, and then I need uh, theme. Okay. And inside of my theme, I need this one. I need to go up, not down. Okay. This one is fine. So this is Visual Studio Code, all right? Now, I will experiment why you need to take a design driven approach. So, I'm just going to use uh, random stuff. I think I have so many of them. I can just choose one. It's not important for me. Okay. So this is my Visual Studio code. I'm going to share screen with one of this. Yeah, I, I love working on uh, dark mode because, because uh, I, I work almost every, every day, every night. So I don't want to ruin my eyes. So that's why you see everything is on dark mode. All right, so as we said, we said um, the web works with three languages, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Now, if I go live with this, with what I currently have, what I currently have here, this is what you see, all right? There is style, and then there is HTML, it's the structure. Now. If I want to do this, you, you see in this design, right? Which is beautiful. If I remove it, if I remove everything, uh, 
I save it, it updates. This is what you see if I remove the style. So I'm just gonna basically delete them, uh, delete the footer. Save. So I have a very clean, very clean browser, nothing, nothing there. If I check, if I check the, if I inspect it, so there's nothing in the body apart from this you understand later. So there is nothing in the body, there is no style as well. Now I want to build a website. Say I want to build a website, guys. I want to build a website. How can I build what I don't see, what I don't know? It's just technically impossible. Where do I start from? Right? Where do I start from? It's impossible to know where to start from. Do I start from the title? Okay, if I start from the title, what font should I, what size of font should I give it? Uh, what do I need on the title again? Wait, uh, I need a navigation bar. How do I do the navigation bar? Uh, I need a footer, oh my God, there's too much to do. So this is the problem. If you start as a beginner without a deep understanding, like you don't have a background in programming, and you just want to go straight to writing the code. It's a very tough thing to do, which is why in the industry today, almost everyone without a background in programming are front-end developers because they take a design-driven approach and then they understand design or they understand the front-end, which is easy to conceptualize. And then we advance to back-end, all right? So it's difficult to do. If I say, even if I say, I need a heading, and then I say, uh, training session started, I save it. Oh, now I have a heading. Okay, so now what? It's difficult to conceptualize. How do you go about it? How do you walk around it? How can I use this thing to build a beautiful design? It's very difficult to do, all right? However, on the other hand, if I choose a design-driven approach, all right? If I choose a design-driven approach using Figma, okay? I can sample a design that I like online. I can sample it and build a design of my own. Build a design of my own. And then I can just take the code. I can see the code, right? This is heading, apparently. And the heading has all of these properties. Okay, if I take them all, all of this, copy. Computer is angry. Okay, I'll use, <clears throat> I'll use this control C. So I copy it and then I apply it to the style. All right, I'm going to do a shortcut. We're going to touch some of these things today, if not today, in the future. So I'm going to use style, then I'm going to target my H1. If I paste it, save it. Uh, what did it do? Uh, wait, it didn't apply the, ah, I'm using English keyboard. Okay. So I'm using English keyboard, that's why. So you see, now he applies the style, right? I can, I, can, I can do the same thing again and say this button, all right? Did it take the button? So look at this. So color, 
if I copy this color and this radius, actually I need to copy most of it. And what property am I using? Uh, let's see. So actually HTML already provides you a default button. So I'm going to use the default button from HTML. Okay, I use the default button, maybe submit button. I can, no, I don't need submit button, just a button. And then I say, uh, click here. Okay, and then I apply the style to that button. The style that I, I already have, I took from Figma, okay. Actually, I don't need top left and right. If I save it. Now you see, I have the same button. Okay, so it's white, so that's why it's white. You see what I mean? So from the design, I can take the code from the design and put it in my code and I don't have to crack my head. All right. So this is this is this is the approach we will be taking. All right. A design driven approach where first of all we work on the design and then we build the design into so what I can see already here is that I have a I have a um, I have a session. So everything is in my section. Okay, so I'm going to say section. Okay, and then I copy the button and this, I put it in here. Okay, if I do that, you won't see anything on the browser. Okay, but what I want precisely is the color. So if I click on the color, I can see the color here. I can take the color for the section. And when I apply it to the section, I target the section here. Then apply color. I think I just, I didn't copy everything. So let me copy everything so you will see it. So it's background all the way here. So save it. And now you see. The reason why it's like this, there is already, there's a reason why, all right? Uh, so my test, my font style is black. If I check my design for my font style, my font style is actually white. I didn't take that previously. So I can take that as well and then come to my browser and put the font color of white for my test. So you see, this is a design driven approach. The first thing you need to do is work on your design, perfect your design, make a beautiful website, and then you just go copy all the codes. Why do you have to copy? Because they are not production ready code. As you can see, they are not production ready code. I just copy the code and then I put it in my Visual Studio code. All right, and when you do that, then you can have a professional website, all right? So design-driven approach, anything you see in that place can be replicated in the code. That's why you are programmers, all right? But I am, the, this program is designed as a cheat to put aside the difficult part so you can fast track your learning and later on you can adopt a personal approach to understanding you know, what is happening behind this, the screen, all right? I'm ab abstracting the difficult part. All right, let's move fast. So this is why we have chosen the design-driven approach, all right? It's easy to conceptualize. It's easy to see what you want to do. If I choose a, a very large font for my design, that's because I want it to be large, all right? If I have to code it, then I will code it to be large. But if I don't see the design and I want a font size, how can I tell which font size is the perfect font size, right? Like if you look at this design, there are a couple of things that are working here, okay? 
what are the things that you see? There is visual hierarchy. There is, there is overlapping, okay? There is a blend of color. Like if you look here, I'm using white over a blue background and I'm using a border of white over a blue background. Why blue? Why white? Why black? Why orange color? So look at this color here. It's the same as the chat logo. So they're, 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 they are blending of colors as well. How can you tell all these things if you don't see it? So most developers have this huge problem of trying to figure out the right font size, trying to figure out how to design a website without seeing a website. You can't do that. It's, the, it's one of the most difficult things to do for newbie developers. So you need to see the design first, create a design, and then take the design and interpret it in code. That's the way programming works. And that's the way this program uh, is designed. Okay, so uh, that's it for that, uh, for the second question. Uh, now the third question. This thing is funny. I, I can fix it, but I just don't want to do it. Let me just do it. Okay. All right. Uh, third question, setting up your programming environment, which is the IDE. Uh, thank you for Mr. Jimmy for uh, telling us to actually download it before we started. Uh, so Visual Studio Code is called an IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment which basically means that that is where you write your code, okay? ID is where you write your code, all right? So Mr. Jimmy, if you remember, you said you saw some, you downloaded one, you downloaded several ones, uh, but they are not, I, I, can't, I can't remember much of it, but the funny thing is that, guys, you can write, programs on anything, on anything. So uh, this is a notepad. If I copy this code that I have here, uh, my worries will actually be finding it. So if I, if I, you see, this is notepad. Guys, this is notepad, all right? I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to save it on my desktop as uh, website, let's say websd.html. Remember it is notepad, okay? I go to my desktop and this is my desktop and I look for websd.html. This is websd.html. If I double click it, it opens the same thing. Why? Because <laughs> code is just tests. Codes are just tests. So you can pretty much write codes on, any, on anything, on any Word document, not generally anything, on any Word processing application. All right? The reason why we use IDEs which are integrated development environments because they are much more sophisticated. You type one thing, it's complicit for you. Like if I had to do some of the things, like if I say section, I want to start a, a, another section, I just type section. If I enter, it opens and closes. If I do the same for H1, H, maybe H2 this time, it opens and closes. So it types the, the other things for me. If I do curly bracket, it opens and closes it for me. So that's why it's integrated development environment. It's, it's much more, more than this because if you have problems, for instance, it shows me lines telling me this is the opening and this is the closing. And it's, 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 indents this one. So there's a lot of stuff it does, basically. I can close this part 
So I don't see it, so I can just maybe continue working on the heading section. So there's a lot it does, all right? And aha, another example, it gives you hints. It gives you hints, all right? And in the case of links, uh, since I don't have style, if I have a style file, I can, I can show you when I start, okay, say, say I have a new file of um, main style.css, okay? If I go to the HTML, part of what it does, so if I start to type main, you see, it's complicit for me. It goes there and finds it. So there's a lot of stuff that the IDE does, which I cannot get here. So if I come here and I type section, enter, you see that? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't give me hints. There is no hint. And if I come here and I say main, it doesn't complete it. So this is why people don't use Notepad. And this is why people spend more time finding the right ID. Some developers are very good with Visual Studio Code. Some are very good with uh, Atom. There's Atom, there's Sublime. Some are even good with Vim. Vim works in the, in the terminal. For, for those of us who know the terminal, uh, this is the terminal CMD, command prompt. And on Mac, it's called terminal. Vim works here. Some developers prefer to write an entire program like Visual Studio Code from here. Respect to them. <laughs> That's like RIP for me. Anyway, so this is the integrated development environment. It is where you write your code. But guys, don't confuse integrated development environment for just something you download on your computer. Uh, Mr. Steven, uh, for those of us who know Mr. Steven, Kenny Bolo, when he was taking us on a training, shout out to him, by the way. When he was taking us on a training, he was using Repolit. Repol, Repolit, Repol.it. So this is also an integrated development environment. Uh, in this case, it's in the cloud. All right. Uh, so I've just authorized it. Come on. Okay, so this is also an integrated development environment, right? And okay, this one's. And you can write your code as well. Here, you can see these are actually JavaScript code. Oh, by the way, this is where the training we were having with, with Mr. Kenny Bolo. You see, this is JavaScript. All right, so you can, you can see index.js. You can write your code here. And there are so many of them. For, for designers, which you guys will become, the one you'll be using is this one, Code Sandbox. Because you guys will become designers. And most designers want their own too, right? So they want their own too. This was a task I did for a company. They gave me a task uh, to do, which I couldn't even go halfway because the dude was, was there. I wasn't thinking straight. So after the whole thing, true confession, uh, I was able to do it after, <laughs> after the interview. <laughs> anyway, so this is, this is a tool that uh, uh, designers use called Sandbox. So there are so many of them. So it's also an IDE. That's all I'm trying to say. These are IDEs, all right? But they are not on my computer. They are in the cloud. And there are so many of them, so many, all right? So when you start to program, guys, and you start to use VS Code, and then you tell someone, oh, I'm trying to learn how to use VS Code. And then you meet someone, and then the person say, why are you using VS Code? Why don't you use Atom? Guys, don't confuse it for programming language. It's just the ID. It's just the tool, the environment where you write code. You can say to the person, uh, for now, thank you. Like, thank you. Why do you need multiple IDEs when you just need one to write a code, right? So 
Choose one and stick with it. Oftentimes, it is best to choose the one uh, the trainer is using. And it may sound subjective in this case, but actually VS Code, as you have noticed, is from Microsoft. And Microsoft is pumping millions of dollars to make VS Code uh, available and much more powerful, which is also free uh, for community. So community is a very big thing in programming, guys. Community is a very big thing. You have to work with the community, all right? So uh, a little bit more on the VS Code. I'm going to delete everything because it's kind of confusing to see something before you actually start doing anything. So delete. Okay, delete immediately. Cancel. Delete this one as well. Okay, so when you open your VS Code, this is probably what you see. In case you don't see this, you will probably see uh, the welcome. Let me uh, close it. So since I've deleted everything, I'm just going to open it again, VS Code. So if you open your VS Code, this is probably what you will see, maybe without recent. So this is what you will see, all right? Uh, now, it may look like a lot to take in, but it's actually simple, all right? Just imagine it like Microsoft Word. If Microsoft Word doesn't scare you, this is where you type. So don't let it scare you. It's just like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or any, other applications. So the key thing is just don't let it scare you. It takes a while to navigate everything. Uh, as you already know, for those using Windows, this comes with every application on Windows. And for Mac, you probably would see uh, something different, maybe Mac logo, uh, but then you still see view, you still see edit. It's basic, right? Uh, oftentimes this doesn't scare people. What scares people are this are these ones. Uh, for you, you may not have all of this because uh, you don't need them uh, for now. So you would have this one for certain. This you will have to search. Um, maybe not source control. I'm not sure. I think it comes by default. You won't have this one. Uh, this is debugger. Now I think remote explorer comes, but you will certainly have this one. All right. So. This is the first task, guys. If you want to write it down, you can write it down. You will need to download first Live Server. All right, for your VS Code, you need to download Live Server. And when you're downloading Live Server, now remember where I went to? I came to Extension. Extension, if you click here, this is Extension. And then type in Live Server. You have to be connected to the internet when you're doing it, just in case you don't want to do it now because the training is ongoing. You can do it, uh, yeah. I just quickly checked if the recording, if we're actually recording. And uh, you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah, let's uh, share. Okay. But just let me know if you can't hear me or something goes wrong, guys, so that I can, I can quickly fix it. All right, all right. So uh, live server, make sure you download the one with this logo. All right. Okay. This is to set up our ID environment. Okay, guys. After setting this up, we may not touch it for the next two three sessions. Okay because what we're doing is design. We're taking the design-driven development approach. When we finish our design and we are solid with our design knowledge, then we will revisit IDE and start writing codes, all right? Okay, so download Live Server. Live Server is a very essential tool. Uh, during the course of the training, you will see why. Okay, that's the first thing. Download Pretia. Pretia. Make sure it's the one with this logo. OK. 
okay? Right? Uh, which other one? I think these are the basic, basic ones. These this are not basic, but essential too. They are more essential tools, but these ones are like, these ones stand out. Okay. Uh, I was going to say something. Um, okay. Yeah, I remember. So guys, a little bit about learning so that we, we so that what we learn was, we, we, when we experiencing difficulty, we can understand where it's coming from. The first time you see something, like what we're doing now, guys, you are only being exposed to it. This is not real learning. It's, it's exposure, not real learning. If I have to type very difficult codes for you now, the only takeaway you will get from it is you will see how it is done. But you won't be, you may not be able to do it on your own. All right, but you will see how it is done. The second time you will see it, it's not going to be exposure anymore because you have seen it. Then you understand how, how it is actually done. Okay, so this is how it is done. So that is no longer, the first time is exposure. The second time is you seeing how in, in much more uh, uh, informed way. I always say that the third time is, how, is where you understand. Okay, so the second time is why. The first time is how. The second time is why. So that's the, that's the time you begin to see. Like what I typed initially in here, you just saw it. If I ask you to type them, you can't type them, but you saw how, all right? If I go back now and I begin to say index.html, now you're seeing, if I say HTML, now you're seeing why. Okay, so if you, you now you have to have HTML, index.html, and then you now have to start typing the code. And then if I type all of those things that I typed previously in, those doc, in that document, H1, uh -oh. and I type H1, uh, training session has started. Okay, if I save it, and then the thing that I asked you guys to download, live server, now you guys are seeing it. Hmm, if I click live server, okay, so it opens up. So that's what he did. So the first time is an exposure, a general overview, how it works. The second time you begin to see what is making it work, why? So that's the question of the why, all right? But still you won't, or you may not be able to do it yourself. But with practice and consistency, when you see it over and over again, and then you now do it yourself, that's actually when you learn. So guys, if at any point, you get stuck and you're like, I'm your Rikini Ishi, I can't do this thing. It's normal. You saw me do it. So you want to do it, but it's not working for you. That's because what you had gained is on how to do it. The general overview, you know it's supposed to work. The reason why it's not working for you is because you haven't actually seen the why of how it works. Why does it work? All right. So the why is what is going to guide you to know what to find, what to search for. Okay. So I, I needed to explain that so that when you get stuck, you should, you, you will understand what is happening at the time. Okay. So we've answered uh, setting up the environment. So IDEs are integrated development environments where you write your code. So an IDE 
is a software application that provides comprehensive facilities to computer programmers for software development. Oh my God, I love this picture. Oh my God, I love this picture. Why do I love this picture? <laughs> there is a general misconception that programming is for men. Guys, I give this finger to that. Why? <laughs> because the first programmers were actually women. When, you, when they are talking about programmers in, in the historical sense, it was women. They were like desktop publishers of the 90s. It was women who were actually doing, going into the machine. So the, the programmers were punching the numbers or whatever. The women would be the one who would go into that machine and put it there. And now for some reason, it feels like it's only men. And then women think women in tech. Women were the first. Okay, I'm sorry I, I deviated, but I just needed to say that for the ladies in the house. So you don't think that programming is just for men. That's crap. All right? They are, they are sophisticated women programmers out there. And for you starting out as a programmer, you actually need to follow them. Look for them on LinkedIn. There are so, so many of them on even Instagram. I follow some of them. So I'm sorry I, I deviated. I just needed to say that because it's a, it's a, it's a common misconception that uh, men are programmers. In fact, the whole thing was destroyed when university started. When university started, they started enrolling men because at the time, most parents uh, want to sponsor their male child instead of their women, their, their children, their lady, female children. So I just wanted to understand that, as you can see, it's a very old picture. That's a woman. Okay, all right. So I'm kind of a fake feminist, you can say. Anyway, I think I will remove this part if I can, so that it won't be used in the future. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's continue. Okay, HTML fundamentals. So, HTML fundamentals. Now, we're going into coding, right? The reason I put this here is, if you understand HTML fundamentals, especially for Mr. Jimmy, he's been on my neck. <laughs> if you understand this part, you'll be able to, uh, uh, bootstrap your learning process. Because if we get to design, while we're designing, some part of your brain will be processing, how do I implement this in code? All right, so that's why we needed to understand the fundamentals of HTML, which is the skeleton, CSS, which is the style, before we can get into design. All right, we will spend some time in design. I don't know, for some reason I can't see Mr. Um, Mr. Falabi, I think he left, but it's okay. You can always watch the video. All right. So fundamentals of HTML. Uh, yeah, I, I, wait, wait, let me say this before we continue. There is one common mistakes, all right, for programmers who are just getting into programming. And I think Mr. Falabi actually asked the question, you know, like you start, and then you are not certain if that is the right path, right? It's very common. Or you doing something, but you don't know how to do it independently on your own, all right? This program, this, this uh, entire thing that we're doing is meant to solve that problem, okay? Which is why it is design-driven approach, all right? If you design something, guys, on your own, you designed it, your design, all right? Your color. When you get to Visual Studio Code, you will find that color. But if I am the one designing it, and I'm choosing a color, when it is time for you to design yours, you won't know which color to choose. But if I tell you, this is how you choose colors, now, when you are when you are writing your code, you know the best color to choose. It is easy to write the code 
when you have an overall picture of what you want to do, what you want to do, not what I am telling you. If I tell you all these things and it gets to the point where you have to do it, and I didn't tell you how to think like a designer, how to think like a programmer, it's going to be very difficult to do. I have tried it. I was stuck. You have to grind, 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 grind before you get to that point where you can now think independently on your own because you have studied extensively. So this is why the, with the design approach, when you finish your design, it's easier to go to code and write the code to make it look like the design than without a design and writing the code to look like nothing. And then you cannot think of it from out of the box on your own. Like, this is what I want. To, I'll show you one thing, guys. I'll show you one thing. So, why design driven approach? Look at this, guys. Look at this. So, this is called mood board. It's called mood board. So I go on the internet and then I, I, I want to work on a project. I want to work on a project, maybe e-commerce project, any project, okay? I go on the internet and then I find samples of different designs that kind of give me an idea of how I should approach my design. Oh, I like this curve here. I like this curve here. Okay, just this curve, okay, but I don't like this image. I need to, maybe with this curve, I'm going to put an image that overlaps on the curve, okay? All right, so I like, I like the curve and the image overlapping. How about my navigation? So what kind of navigation do I want to use? Do I, need, do I use this kind of navigation or just push my navigation in the middle? So you see, I get an idea of what I want to do by sampling different designs, all right? And then I build my design and then I go to my code. I write my code to look, because in the end, after design, you need to write the code. Then you need to write your code to look like that design. Now, for many of you guys, I'm not, I, can, I can't say 100% that everybody will end up as a programmer. But for some of you, you will end up becoming a sophisticated designer that understands the code. You may not be able to write them, but you understand that this is how this thing can be interpreted in the code. And this is why you've designed it this way. I'm not gonna put my navigation at the bottom of my page because it's stupid, right? So when I'm building my design, my website, I put my navigation at the top. So this is the problem people often have. You learn Java, but you don't know how to design an application. And then you're stuck. Like, how do I design my Java application? Right? Even in programming, that is core programming, writing codes, all right? There is design-driven approach, design-driven development, which is not even in the web, all right? There is. Not even what, what we're doing. We're using design-driven approach on the, on the top level. When you get deeper into the design driven development, there is much more sophisticated uh, design driven development. All right. So when you when I when I hear people say that I know how to use this thing, but I don't know how to do it on my own. Okay, that's because they know the why, how to write the code, but they don't know how to design the entire thing on their own. Right. So. One have to, there, there are two ways to, do, to learn program. Either you start from the top to the bottom or you start from the bottom to the top. We starting from the, bot, from the top, what you see, and then go down to the code. Instead of start from the code and go up to design, which is tough. You, can't, you won't be able to think independently. I know I've said it many times, guys. And that's because I have seen it. Myself, I'm an example of that, all right? So that's why we're taking this approach. And I hope you will all understand, like you see how quick it was to do this thing in seconds. That's because we 
have done, we have the design and we're just matching the design. We're just matching the code with the design. All right, so HTML fundamentals. We have like 10 minutes more. <laughs> I hope we'll be able to touch CSS. All right, so HTML fundamentals, Control Shift T to bring this thing back. All right, so first question, what is HTML? This is always the first question, all right? Guys, if you remember the last time we said that every program, programming language is a tool, all right? When you want to learn a, a programming language, you need to understand what is this tool meant for? What is this tool meant to serve, right? If HTML is a hammer and I want to use HTML to solve CSS problem where CSS is a water, it's the ocean, and I want to swim on the ocean, and what I have is a hammer, I cannot swim in that ocean. I need a cano, right? I hope this makes sense. Every tool serves a purpose. So every programming language serves a purpose. Knowing the right tool will help you grow in this industry. Some people learn PHP. Meanwhile, what they want to do is front end. And then it took them 10 years to realize, I should have just learned HTML and CSS 10 years ago. Why didn't this, this fool tell me that at that time. Now I've spent 10 years and I'm just starting when I'm 60 to learn web development. Too late, maybe not too late. So I don't want that to happen to you guys because it's from my experience that I'm speaking, all right? I started the web, I started the programming language in 2000, year 2000. Now I'm 37, so guys, don't make my mistake, please, don't. Year 2000, I was doing Visual Basic. Visual Basic, year 2000. JavaScript was 1995, five years before then. If I had done JavaScript at that time, and HTML and CSS, well, maybe that's how God works. We won't be having this training. So it's a good thing that I'm unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good thing, right? So guys, don't make my mistake. Everything is going digital. If you don't become a programmer, you probably will have a child who is going to get into the digital world and you can say something. So you don't be like a parent who the child says, dad, mom doesn't know anything. No, it's not good. Yeah, the way we grew, our parents helped us with certain mathematics. At some point, they told us, <laughs> time out <laughs> when you start doing algebra. Yala, ya boy, you fetch him, Lishi. We don't want to teach you. You know, so that's how it is. So take your, you should be able to take your kids from the base to a level where the child becomes independent and then you allow them to go. All right. This world is digital world. So that's basically all I'm saying. So please don't make my mistake. All right. Understand the two and know the essence of the two, all right? That's why the, there was a lot of emphasis on the last session saying that uh, the front end, web development, these are the languages. For front end, this is the languages you need to know. When you get into the back end, then you start to talk about other languages, all right? There are banks that use Java for back end to control front end it's very possible java is not the language of the web all right i when i started i used flask i used django this was early 2019 i used i used i worked extensively on flask i never got a hang of it because down in my mind i knew that this language is not for the web you could feel it because i i've done a lot in the web prior to then I could feel it like this is not a language for the web. And many businesses who rush to use Django, many of them are coming out of it. Okay, so 
understand language of the web understand it deeply you will always get a job always as long as the websites will be forever will be existing all right okay i'm sorry guys i just needed to say that so html stands for hypertext markup language hypertext markup language uh, for those of us who understand how definitions are, are, are done, are, are, are designed, how people come up with the definitions, uh, the way definition, the way the general approach to definition to defining a word is not just to uh, explain the word. No, if I if I want to explain HTML, I'm going to say HTML. Is the programming language is the programming language that is used to build a website, and the H so that's explaining. But that's not how definition works. If you go and look at definition of words, you will see what I mean. Okay, it's concise and it's straight to point. It highlights the key factors. All right, definition of words. So. It's the same approach to programming language. And this, is, this will become a very essential skill for you guys that you don't just say Java and then you say Java and then you explain it. You actually have to go look at the definition to see what Java does, all right? So HTML, hypertext markup language. Let's remove the language because we know it's a language in any case. Like, why would we call JavaScript language? We know JavaScript is a language. So we could as well call this HM, <laughs> HTM, right? But it doesn't sound, you know, right? And this was when they were starting out. So I think it was in 1992, I can't remember, early or even 80s. So hypertext markup language. Now, let's prove. Let's prove it. All of these are tests, right? They are text. And the text, we use the text. We use the text to build this website. Text built a website, right? If I refresh it, it's going to update with this one because it's still. Oh, no, it's not pointing. Let me point it to it. So it is uh, uh, 500. So it points to it, training section, right? If I want a button, I'm going to type a button. Maybe too much words. So now I have a button. Right? What is hyper? It means it is more. It's more than a test. It's not a test. It's more than a test. But it is a test. <laughs> I'm speaking like this uh, movie. Uh, same, same, but different. I don't know if, you've, if, you've, if you guys have seen that movie. Anyway, it's, it's a very funny movie. I recommend it. It's a while away time. Another example. Uh, uh, no, I need an anchor tag. Okay, an anchor tag, and I'm going to link it to google.com. If I save it, now I have this text here. You probably have seen, I mean, I'm, of, of course, everyone has seen it. It's so many on Wikipedia, if you remember this kind of thing. And Wikipedia is actually a very good example of how the web used to look uh, so many in the beginning. And you notice that Wikipedia still retains that approach. So all of this are text, but they are more than a text. Why? Because they take you somewhere. When you click on them, ah, it says error. That's because I didn't put www. Okay, save it, go back, okay, click it. Seriously, 
What, why does it do that? Uh, okay, I'll just copy google.com, paste it and see why it's acting that way. So there are so many reasons why this thing is acting this way. Okay, so go back, <clears throat> now click it, and now it's working. So it's wanted me to put the HTTP. Voila, this is how we also learn. Uh, but there are so many reasons why. Okay, if I put it probably in Notepad, it's going to work differently. It's probably because of the live server, which is injecting it, very possible. So you see, it's a, it's a text, but when I click it, it takes me to another website. So it is hypertext. It is more than a text. This button, this is the button, it's a text. The button is a text. But when I click the button, it can submit, it can go get my picture, it can do anything. But it's just a text. So it is not just a text, it is a hypertext. All right? So guys, that's what you should, that, that's what I want you to take away. So that's the meaning of hypertext, all right? How about a markup? Markup. For those of us who play football, all right? Uh, especially in Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigerians love football. I mean, now football is, everybody loves football. But in Yoruba, when you're playing football, like, and you have a coach, your coach will, will say, lo marke, lo marke. right? Go and mark him, right? So you go and mark him. When you mark him, you pretty much like blocking him from coming, basically saying, instead of saying, go and defend, it's like too much, like who has time for grammar? Go and mark him, you know? So when you go to mark him, he's basically saying, go and defend. Now, if you're defending from your, your post, your goal post, for more sophisticated their coach, they can say even defend from attack. So you can defend from both sides. So when you defend from both sides, you've marked on both sides. Guys, now look, let me break this down for you. Look at this button. You see this button, there is marking from the beginning and there's marking from the bottom, from the end, All right? How about H1? Look at it. You see that? How about this anchor tag, this A? Look at that. Marking from both sides. How about this body? Look at body. Look at body. Huh, how about HTML? HTML, HTML, hmm? How about head, head, title? Everything is marked up, marked up. Hypertest, it's a hypertest, markup. You have to mark everything. Language is a, it's a language. So basically, those who wrote this program are saying, please guys, mark everything up. Anything inside of HTML has to be marked up. Anything, anything, right? Anything. And this is very crucial, very essential. I'm gonna save this file. It still works perfectly, no difference. I'm going to write something without marking it up. It is stupid not to mark up HTML. Save. Guys, you see that? It came out. What I typed came out. It came out. So, why did it work? 
the first principle, this exposes the first, the first fundamentals of programming, all right, is that anything you see in the web is working because a group of guys came together, rule number one, a group of guys came together and said to themselves, let us all agree that any time we want to do this thing, this is how it has to be done, guys. And this is the beginning of hacking, scam, hacking, because people who know that people came together to make it work like this, they can go around through the back door to hack it. All right, this is the foundation of hacking as well. Okay, so principle or fundamental number one, the web works because people came together and agreed that this is how it should work. So guys, when you see H1 giving you text, H1 here giving us text, is because they agreed. If I change H1, to button. Guys, you notice when I'm typing at the top, Visual Studio Code is typing at the bottom for me. That's the power of IDE. I'm going to delete it and put it in small letter. You see, Visual Studio Code types it at the bottom for me. That's the power of IDE. So this is why you don't type in Notepad. If I save this, it changes from heading to button. The computer did not set this standard for us. We told the computer to act like this anytime it sees this button tag. We told the computer. So guys, you are human, you are much more powerful than the computer. The reason why programming seems to be difficult is because so many guys or so many people, fuck, no, so I'm sorry, not so many guys, so many people, men women came together to build it that's why it looks so difficult but when you break it down and take it bit by bit you will see the simplicity in programming all right it is very easy to learn if you have the right if you get getting from the right source very easy so the button it changes this to this so if I change it back to H3, H basically means heading. You probably have assumed it. See, it turns back to this, all right? So the key thing is to mark it up, all right? Just mark it up, put everything inside. Don't let anything lie like this, never. If a professional sees your code, if I'm not even a professional, someone who understands HTML sees that you have something lying there, lying around that is not marked up, then they know this person is just a dummy, all right? Rule number one, it is beyond text. You're typing text, which are producing powerful stuff. Like you saw, it was what I typed that gave a color, right? So if I say style, and I target my body and I say background, color, and then I say this one, or uh, maybe yellow, because it's very sharp for the eyes. So you see, it's what I typed that painted this thing. So this is how the web works. In fact, every programming language, they're just test. You type them. And then they create all of these things. In fact, all these things, guys, that you're seeing, they are just texts, texts that create a design. In some cases, in fact, until recently, we have SVGs, which are pictures or vector-based pictures. So you use, you use numbers to create image. Google Maps is a very good example of a vector. Google Maps, you cannot, you cannot finish a Google Maps 
until it becomes a pixel. Like when you zoom into a picture and then it loses quality. You cannot do that with Google Maps because it's vector-based SVG, all right? So we, on, today we can use SVGs to create applications. All of these things you see here, they are just texts. They are just text. In the end, it's just zeros and one. So HTML, everything has to be marked up, right? Marked from the front, marked from the back. That's the fundamentals of HTML, but it's generally called tags. You tag them, tag. So if you want to know how to add a picture in HTML, all right? you will look for uh, image tag, HTML, and it's gonna tell you what, how. Now, I am using the wrong term, but I'm using it intentionally, all right? I'm using the, the wrong term, I'm using it intentionally. If you check like we've checked, you still see HTML image tag, all right? What it is called in actuality, is image element, all right? But I'm saying it intentionally because we're starting from markup and we're going to tag because markup can also be tagged because if you, if you tag it in the beginning and you tag it in the end, you've tagged that thing, right? But it's basically markup, all right? So what are you tagging? If you want, to, if you want an image, you need an image tag. If you want, Title, you need a title tag. If you want music, you want to be able to play music, you need a music tag, all right? But it's not called tag, it's called element. So I want you to see how we get to it. So when you want to find how to do it, you need to know how to find what you want. So how about we say, Video element HTML. Okay, so how to have a video element? You see, it's called it a tag. It's called it a video tag. Let's click it. All right, let's click it. So we have clicked the video HTML tag. Let's see what it called it. Okay, it says, uh, where is it? Uh, do, 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 do. maybe make it big. All right. Uh, actually, these guys are not the best resource. Let's use the best resource, which is called MDN. They simplify most of these things. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, as you can see here, guys, look at what he called it. the HTML video element, all right? So just in case you're starting out, you're seeing tag, you're hearing markup, you're hearing element. Don't get confused, they are the same thing. They're all marked up. Those markups are called, also called tags, but what actually are they? They're all elements. So don't get it twisted, they're all the same thing, all right? I don't want us to get it confused. They're all the same thing, all right? Uh, Okay, so everything is marked up. Rule number one. Rule number two, okay, if you're searching for something, you search with the tag or you search with element, all right? How to put an image? Image, element, image, element, or tag in Java, in a HTML, okay? So, I go, I find it. The essence, the why I'm doing this is for you to become independent. You don't need me to practice, all right? The HTML IMG element embeds an image into a document. IMG element. So I went to search for how to put an image. It's telling me it's IMG. And then it gave me an example. This is an example. All of this. If I copy it, I paste it in my code here. I save it. 
it's refreshed. I get this. Why did I get this? Because it's not pointing anywhere. All right. This media is within their website. So if I want an, an image that is actually going to show, let's look for an image on Google. Uh, any, any image, um, uh, Tower, Paris. I mean, I can't think of any image. There's so many images in my head going on. Okay. So I'm just going to look for a random image uh, in Paris. Okay. Click it. Hopefully. Yeah, certainly it's going to take me somewhere. Okay. So this, let's point to this image. This is actually a crime. If you're building a sophisticated application, you don't do this. Point your site to someone else's uh, site. If they find out, they may give you a problem. Ah, maybe if you view full size. Okay, so this, so they're using a CDN. Let's see. Okay, save it. Let's go to our website. Now you see on our website, we have that, all right? So this is how the web works. So we have uh, an image and it's very big. If we want to control the size, we just give it a style. A style, this we will talk more in the next class, all right? Style, I give it a height of 100, maybe say 250 pixel. If I save it, then get smaller. All right. So fundamentals of HTML. This is fundamentals of HTML. Let's stop here and then go a bit to CSS. If you remember the last training, the last session, we said one day to one week to learn HTML. You, you have seen all the secrets of HTML. Basically, you have seen all the secrets. What you now need to know is know which element can be used for what. If you want video, if you want paragraph, if you want the text in the paragraph to be italics, if you want the text in the paragraph to be bold, that's all you need now, all right? So that's um, HTML. We will touch it a bit more in the next class, but next class we'll go fully into design, okay? Now, CSS, remember we said in, in the beginning that HTML is for the structure, CSS is for design. If you remember, we first type in this, and put the button, and then we give a style. You can as well style without a button, without any element. You can just style the body, right? It's possible. Okay, now CSS. What is CSX? Okay, CSS uh, define. Okay, so basically, it says here. CSS stands for cascading style sheets. What is this, guys? C S S. Shikina. So that's that's what it is. It helps you with styles. All right. CSS helps you with styles. That's what it stands for. Cascading style sheet. What is one style sheet that we know? Oh, wait, PowerPoint is a style sheet. So, Josh, are you saying if I know how to use style sheet PowerPoint, I should be able to know CSS? Chances are yes. Yes, chances are yes. PowerPoint style sheet. Now I say power style sheet, let's see. What does it show us? Hmm, it just shows. us. <laughs> Okay, say PowerPoint fully. Or should we just say what is PowerPoint, right? PowerPoint defined. Okay, a software package designed to create electronic presentation, presentation consisting of a series of separate pages or slides. Presentation, if you talk of presentation, you talk about style, presented, right? When the guy who developed HTML developed HTML, it was so boring. There's, you couldn't see any design. It was so boring, right? When B 
people who were coming from not tech uh, environment started to use the website. They were they started asking that can can't you guys make this thing look more interactive? OT is too dull, right? So they came up with CSS to handle the problem of styling. And when you talk about styling, you're talking about presentation, right? Often the biggest problem people have of getting past CSS is that word, cascading. Cascading. That's the word that people have. This is where it confuses people and people get scared. Like, ah, cascading is like a, it's too much, it's too much of a big English. Guys, it is not. What is cascading? You're gonna see it now. This is cascading. A waterfall is a cascade. For those of us who were born probably in the in the 80s or 90s, if you remember when you open a website on the 90s, it's like opening boxes and it's going like this. How many of us remember that? When we have very slow internet, when you open a website, it's gonna you you will actually see the boxes like filling up. <laughs> That's the cascading effect of CSS. Today we have like super duper smart, super, super duper fast internet. You don't see the cascading effects anymore, right? But it's still there. It's still there. In CSS, there's a lot of inheritance happening, right? So that's the cascading effect. It goes from the top and it starts to feel it. It starts to feel it. It feels it down. It feels, if it's, if it's an image, it starts to feel the image from the top to the bottom, and then it goes to the next page. It feels that section, it goes to the next, that's the way the web has always worked until React. Sorry to disappoint you, <laughs> to React. So it's changing with React and so many other applications, uh, develop software development uh, frameworks, okay? But I just wanted to know, that's CSS in action. Right, and that's the meaning of the cascading. You will understand it when you begin to get go deeper into it. Now, I have before now I've been typing the style here. I'm going to remove it from here. I'm going to type the style here. I'm going to call it style. Actually, I'm going to call it main.css. It doesn't matter the name, it's optional. And I'm going to paste the style here. Because I've pasted it here, I'm just going to remove this one because I it's, it's redundant. I don't have to call style because it's inside of CSS, all right? Now, how do I make this HTML point to that style? Quite simple. I'm just gonna write, uh, I'm just gonna link the two of them, okay? When I type link, IDE gives me uh, this thing to call the CSS, all right? When you start up, when you when you guys start going deep into programming, you'll be hearing words like invoke. Actually, from where I come from and uh, from a Christian background, when you say invoke, it's like you're calling some evil spirit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you say invoke, there's a lot of invocation in programming. All right, it's it sometimes feels like a boss word, invocation and uh, uh, init initialization. All right, so if I save this now, I go to my page again. Wait, did I close it? Yeah, I closed it. Oh, wait. Okay, not bad. So it's uh, localhost um, 550. Okay, so. My color still works. If you doubt it, I'm gonna change it to, oh, jeez, I'm gonna change it to light green. So guys, you can come back later and review this, uh, this material for what we've done, all right? Just time to time, go back to this video and get an idea of what we're doing, all right? So this is CSS in action, all right? When you start to get into programming, what I was explaining to you guys earlier, that it has to be marked up, all right? What that is called is, it is called syntax, all right? So you, 
the first thing you need to know in programming is the syntax of the language. So many developers will spend a lot of time teaching you syntax. So what is syntax? Syntax is the arrangement of words or phrases to create a well-formed sentences in a language. Remember guys, we are learning a language. In fact, we're learning three languages at the same time. So if syntax is the arrangement of words, we are not speaking Chinese here. We are not speaking German. We're speaking HTML. It's a language. CSS is a language. JavaScript is a language. For you to know how to speak that language, you need to understand the syntax, which is the arrangement of the words. Look at this. The structure of statement in computer language. The structure. Why don't you put this one here? Why don't you put that one here? You're speaking about the syntax, all right? So you need to understand the syntax of the language. It's very important, all right? The syntax of HTML is that everything is marked up. The elements are sitting inside of these things. Look at that, less than or greater than. And then the closing tag will have a slash. That, close, that tells you this is the closing from the beginning. The, this is the opening, there is no slash. Closing, there's a slash. Body, opening, body, closing. Anchor, opening, look at the anchor, op opening, anchor, closing. Button, opening, button, closing. Opening, closing. There are some elements that do not have closing tag. In the next session, I will tell you how you can tell. You don't have to put them in your head. It is wrong to cram. Programming, do not cram. Go to search, find it. Don't cram, all right? So this is the syntax of HTML. You need to know the syntax. I said previously, it is actually called element, <clears throat> excuse me. It's actually called elements, but elements are not the only thing we have in HTML. We have only two things, guys. This is how easy HTML is. We only have just two things. So you can become a professional HTML developer. Problem is that you cannot find a job as a professional HTML developer. Nobody's gonna employ you, all right? But if you know the two, HTML, CSS, and you know design, you'll find a job. It's a guaranteed, all right? So there are only two things. That's why you can't actually find a job today knowing HTML because it's so simple, all right? What are the two things? Elements and attributes. Elements and attributes. These are the two things in JavaScript, in HTML, sorry. So we've actually touched uh, CSS and we, so the two things, elements, and attributes. Only two in HTML. It's, it can't go past it. So it's not difficult for you to miss it. Just two, just two. That's why you can learn HTML in one day. Okay, what are the two? We've touched on elements. We said, if you want an image, you go find image elements. If you want video, you go find video elements. If you want heading, title, go find title elements. So it means, it means the first thing you will see is the element. The element is what you use to mark up. It's the element. Now, Josh, what is the attribute again? Attributes, Josh, you haven't talked about attributes. Why? You don't know? Are you scared? No, how about we define it? Define attributes, okay? Regard something as being caused by. I think it's kind of sophisticated definition. Regard something as being caused by. <laughs> so let's look at the definition. He attributed the firm's success to the effort of the managing director. You attribute 
okay, attribute. You attribute something to something, all right? Or a quality or feature regarded as the characteristics or inherent parts of something. This is the one. A quality or feature regarded as a characteristic or inherent part of something. A quality or feature. So when you add an attribute, you are adding a feature to that element that makes it stand out from any other thing, all right? So if I say now, this, HCA, this H3, I duplicate it. I've duplicated it. Now I'm gonna add an attribute of style. And then I'm say, I, I will say color red. Now, looking at it, we know that this, this thing is different from this thing because we have added an attribute to it. And if you look at the code, you see it is different. Like very simple, the guys who built it, programming at that time wasn't sophisticated like it is now. So they used simple terms, right? So attributes, it has a uniqueness to it. Now, question number one, how do you know an element from an attribute? All right, I'm going to take this, copy it and put it in Microsoft Word, right? Let's break it apart. How do you know elements? Elements are wrapped inside like this, and they have opening elements, and they have opening tag and closing tag. The closing tag you can tell by this forward slash. How about an attribute? How do I know an attribute? This is how you know an attribute. This is how you know an attribute. It's the attribute name equal to, and then a double quote. That's an attribute. So let's go back to our VS code again and look. Look at this class. It has an equal to double quote. That's a class attribute. Look at this, href. It's a href attribute. Let's go up. Character set, UTF-8. UTF it's a character set attribute. Viewport name, it's a name attribute. So you see it goes on and on. How about this, language? See, equal to double quote. When you look at a sophisticated website, there's nothing else you, you will see in HTML than just this, right? So let me say, inspect this page. Let's inspect this page, right? Let's inspect the HTML of this page. Look at it. So you can actually begin to break it down. There's document, there's HTML element. This is the opening. So if we scroll down to the bottom, okay, so they, they dumped uh, scripts. But then look at this HTML closing tag and the body closing tag as well. You see that? And how about the attributes? The attributes are there as well. Lang attributes, directory attributes, uh, item type attributes, and on and on. So you can actually break down the website, right? So this is how it works. First, you know the functionality of the tool, which is the programming language. Then you need to have an overview of the language. Then you need to know why, which is knowing what makes it work. The syntax is one of it. How to write that language. In, in English, you say, um, I don't like uh, something. In French, I think it's the other way. Uh, I don't understand. In French, it's je ne comprends, which is I understand not. No, uh, je pas comprends, je pas ne comprends. You can, you can say both in, in French, actually. In French, you can say I understand or I understand not in French. And they are both valid, right? Je ne comprends pas. 
I don't understand. Joe Compro, Joe Comprompa. I think yeah, it's just Joe Comprompa. Yeah, it also means if there's anyone who speaks uh, French, can help me with that. But guys, this is it. So syntax is very important. So we have touched on all of this now. All right. Introduction to web programming. So now we summing up the training because we've done almost two hours. <laughs> so introduction to web programming, deep dive, we have done. Why we chose this approach? Why design-driven development approach? We've covered that. Uh, setting up our environment, we've done that. We haven't uh, touched Figma at all. So next class we'll be, we'll be working on Figma and we'll be making reference to our IDE, all right? HTML fundamentals, we've talked about it. CSS syntax is a lot more easy, but like I said, CSS can take you about six months to learn. Six months, it can take you actually more, all right? So CSS syntax is like this, and if you want me to extract it to show you, I will. So this is the CSS syntax, Guys, don't get scared by CSS. So CSS syntax is like this, selector. This is the value. And this is the property of the value. So this is CSS. So let me paste it again. Selector, it tells to the, to the language, go and select the body. When it selects the body, it says, it asks the question, what do you want to edit in the body? I want to edit the value. The value is background color. It can be anything. Now, I know what you want to select. This is the computer asking you a question. I know what you want to modify. Now, please tell me what you want to modify it to. So it asks you for the property, and then you say light blue. This is the syntax of CSS. So, starts with the curly brackets and closes with the curly brackets. Okay, so this is the syntax. So if, you, if we go to any website now, uh, let's just click one of these and go to the website. Anyone, it doesn't matter, anyone. So we go to the website and then we go to the C CSS uh, section of the site, site, which is the style, all right? This is the style section, you see? This is the selector, what the person has selected. In this case, an ID. And the person applied, excuse me, a background color of white, all right? If we change this to say red, oh, what did you do? Ah, okay, it can only allow me to remove it. All right, but then you can change it. Like if I say now, I say, um, Actually, I can just select it. So I've selected the body. And the body by default has a background of 333, which is probably overridden. Over it's actually there, but it's not seen. So I guess I'm thinking if I put any background color, it's not going to be visible. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be visible because there's, there's something else sitting on top of the background color. So this is why we don't see it. So we need to find exactly what. So say, for instance, I say uh, this, and then I give it a background color. If there's nothing else that is important, then we will see it. So you see that. You see that, right? So the syntax is what you want to modify. In this case, I'm modifying the header because the header is selected here. So selector, go and get the header. And the computer asks you a question. What do you want to modify? That's why it's blinking here. What? So I put the value, which is the background color. And then it asks me again, what property of the background color? And then I say red. So guys, I know it's too much to take in. Please, during the course of the week, let's go back and watch this video over and over again to see the things that we missed, all right? So that you will get them, all right? So the basic thing is the syntax. I wrote this here, but the HTML is not gonna work unless I link it. So it goes and pull it, 
all right all right that's how it works so if you want to practice on your own time my advice which you didn't see me do which you didn't see me do the best way to start all right the best way to start to practice on your own is this okay the best way to start is you have a folder because we say there are three languages of the web you create a folder on your computer on your desktop anywhere and then call it a name i'll call it uh, triple ddd enter you you can't see it because it's i'm using two monitor so this is triple ddd here okay then I will go to my VS code. I will just open my VS code. If I open my VS code, all right? The reason is because you need three languages, all right? Then you go to, you won't see this. You will see the welcome. Let me close it. So this is what you will see, something like this. Then you will go to open, and then you open the folder and select the folder you have created. When you select the folder, it will show something like this now. Then you start creating the file. If I click here, new file, then I will give it a name. Usually index.html is your first file. It's called index, the first. And then you write your HTML. Remember index.html, it's not just index. If I type just index, it will not give me those functionalities. Let me delete it and let me put index, enter. If I type H1, it doesn't do anything, all right? So the first time was for you guys to see the overview. Now I want you to see why, all right? I'm going to rename it now and put HTML. Now, if I type H1, it's complicit, all right? Okay, guys, so that is how you set it up, all right? So let's end the training here. I hope it has been uh, very informative. I know it's too much information, but uh, yeah. So let me know, uh, maybe on Facebook or in the video, how you guys uh, feel about the training i'm going to stop the recording now so we don't have too much of it on the on facebook i know there's a lot of information but guys yeah that's programming